Hello, I am Jino from Reader to Share. And in today's video, we are going to discuss about a new concept called elasticity, more specifically the price elasticity. And then we are going to apply it into two different sites supply and demand. Uh, let me show you the screen. Turn off my camera so that you can see it better. Um, so let's begin. Now, let's first take a look at the price elasticity of demand. The definition of it is the sensitivity of consumers to a change in price. So basically the price elasticity of demand is referring to um, how much will the quantity demanded change if the price changes uh, certainly. So how much will the demand decrease, so the quantity demanded decrease if the price increases or vice versa. So below is the formula of calculating the price elasticity of demand you divide the percentage change in quantity demanded to the percentage change in price. And um, one thing interesting is that the answer is likely to be negative since usually if the percentage change in price is positive, which means that the price went up, means that the quantity demanded is likely to decrease, which means the percentage is likely to be negative. However, in this case, we do not care whether it is positive or negative. We only care about the value itself. So we usually put these two lines and indicate that the price elasticity of demand is the absolute value of the formula. So uh, if the value is higher, it is likely that consumers are more sensitive to a change in, pr in price. Now let's look at the five types of elasticity, the price elasticity of demand. The first one is perfectly inelastic and we talk a certain demand uh, curve is perfectly inelastic if the calculated elasticity is zero. So it means that, wait a minute, we label those price and quantity. Let's go back, so it means that no matter how much the price changes, the quantity demanded is constant. So in this black line, you can check out that the quantity is the same no matter how much the price changes. In this price, and this price, the quantity is the same. The second type of price elasticity of demand is inelastic and we talk that uh, it is inelastic if the calculated elasticity is bigger than zero, but smaller than one. So let's take a look at this red line. Um, let's say if the price, a price at here and the price at here, you can see that the price changed a lot between those two prices, but did the quantity really change as much as the change in price? The answer is no. So if a certain demand is inelastic, we say that consumers usually would not change their uh, quantity demanded um, to a change in price. The third type is unit elastic, and we say a certain demand is unit elastic if the calculated elasticity is one. So you can see this blue line, and if the price changes a certain amount, it is likely that the quantity will also change a certain amount or percentage. The fourth type is elastic, and we say that a demand is elastic if the calculated elasticity is bigger than one, but smaller than infinite. So basically every value that is bigger than one, but it's not infinite. Let's take a look at the screen line um, from here to here. Even a small change in price results in an enormous change in quantity. So in this case, we can infer that the demand is elastic, which means that consumers are likely to change their quantity demanded a lot, given a certain change of price. The fifth concept is perfectly elastic. And we say a certain demand is perfectly elastic if the calculated elasticity is infinite. Take a look at this orange line. Um, if you see this graph, the price didn't actually change. The price is constant. However, you can see that the quantity shifts, shifts, 
ships and ships. This isn't actually very common, but if um, it can happen in certain circumstances, in certain circumstances. Now let's take a look at the price elasticity of supply. The price elasticity of supply is very similar to it of demand. The sensitivity of producers to a change in price, and this is the formula to calculate it. The percentage change in quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price. And in this case, the value is likely to be positive since um, if, the, if the quantity supplied increased, it uh, means that the price increased in most situations. So in this case, you don't necessarily need an absolute value of it. You don't need it. And there are also five types of price elasticity of supply. The first one is perfectly inelastic, and it is when the calculated elasticity is a zero. So in this case, look at, look at the black line, the price changes, but the quantity stays the same. You can usually see this in um, certain um, theaters or sports stadiums, no matter how much the price changes, it is hard for them to increase the quantity of seats. So in this case, it is likely that the supply will be perfectly inelastic. The second type is inelastic, and it refers to certain types of demand when the calculated elasticity is bigger than zero, but smaller than one. Can you take a look at this red line? Um, although the price increase, although the difference between the two prices are huge, the difference in quantity compared to isn't that big. So if we say that the price elasticity of supply is inelastic, it means the producers are not willing to produce uh, increase their quantity supply as much as the price changes. The third type is unit elastic, and it is saying to be a uh, unit elastic of demand. A certain amount of change in quantity will refer the same as a certain percentage change in price. The fourth one is elastic, it refers to certain um, supply curves in which the calculated elasticity is bigger than one, but it's not infinite. Take a look at this green line. The price didn't change a lot between these two, but the quantity supply did. The fifth one is perfectly elastic. It refers to a situation in which the calculated elasticity is infinite, same as demand. Take a look at this orange orange curve. The price remains constant. The quantity supply shifts, shifts different, different, different. Now that we have discussed about price elasticity of demand, price elasticity of supply, and the five types of it, let's take a look at an interesting concept. The fact that elasticity changes along a linear line. So it might seem very illogical. I mean, like, didn't we just talk about types of elasticity with a linear curve? Yes, that is true. But what is important is that elasticity differs along a line. So elasticity isn't actually the same as the slope, since it is not talking about the definite changes in numbers. But instead, it is talking about the change in percentage. Take a look at this demand demand curve. Um, it is linear, but if we calculate the elasticity, price elasticity from this point to this point, um, I calculated before making my video, so the answer will be smaller than one, which means that the demand is inelastic. Oh God. Yep, inelastic. However, if we change it from this point to this point, I've calculated before this video, it'll be nice if you can also try to calculate it. 
the elasticity is likely to be higher than one, which means the demand is elastic in this circumstances. So this is a very important point that elasticity changes along a line and therefore it is very dangerous to risk, uh, to say that the elasticity is the same if the curve is linear because it is not, it can change. And the reason why it changes is because we calculate the percentage difference, not the exact difference of numbers. So thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to our channel. Feel free to comment things like that, uh, questions, um, certain suggest suggestions to my video. Um, right. Thank you, Prefero, for your AP exams. Well, especially for those who are planning to take this exam um, after three weeks, two weeks or so. So I'm going to visit you again after two weeks for my next video covering two concepts of AP microeconomics. Thank you.